Hello, and thank you for joining me today for a class on using the online catalog. We just moved to a new online catalog in August of this year. Um, so we're still getting used to it too. Um, so we thought we would just give you a class today um, to kind of give you a leg up to show you some of the ins and outs um, to help you find your way in this new uh, site. Just a note about who I am. My name is Anne Flanoy. I am the adult services librarian here at the Keller Public Library. So it's my job to put on classes for adults and programs for adults like this. Um, let's talk for a minute about what exactly an online catalog is. And it really is a um, bibliography of a library collection that is available to the public through the internet. So it's basically your, your old school, what you may have been familiar with, that card catalog with the little drawers and the cards in it, it's just all online and everything's all connected. Now, librarians will frequently use terms like PAC or OPAC when they're discussing the online catalog. And these are just acronyms that refer to the online public access catalog or public access catalog. So in the presentation today, I'm probably gonna use uh, the term PAC a lot because that's my, my go-to. So what can you do with an online catalog? Um, you can search to identify resources using information that you know. Like if you know a title, you know an author, you can use the catalog to find things associated with that information. Um, then you can locate where those resources can be found, um, whether that's physically or um, a link to a web page or um, directly to a resource. Um, and then lastly, you can acquire. So you can reserve future access to a resource. You can say, please hold that book for me at the library. I'm on my way to come pick it up. Or you can gain immediate access. If it's an e-resource, um, we can get you um, to the link to the right place to get there. Who can use an online catalog? Um, anyone. Um, the OPAC is open to anyone and it's accessible from any device that has a web browser. Um, all of the information is just there. The only time you would ever need your library card is if you're trying to access personal account information or if you're trying to order materials. To access our new catalog, you can use a direct link, which is this um, in the square on the left, librarycatalog.cityofkeller.com. Um, you can also find a button on our library's homepage on our website. Um, that's that button in the middle. Or you can use any of the pack stations in the library. I think we have seven of them um, and they're varying heights and in different areas around the library. And all of the, all that those computers do is access the pack. So let's try it out. Let's take a look. So this is what you're looking at. This is the uh, the home page of the pack, if you will. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about basic navigation of this page. Um, you'll see this logo for the Keller Public Library. This, uh, if you click on it, it will always bring you to this home page. So does this little house button. So that's your home. Um, sticking with this menu bar here across the top, we've got news and events. This is actually two different links and both of them will take you out of the pack. They'll take you into the city website. Um, if you click on them, it'll just take you to the city website for the, for the calendar. If we go back, this one takes you to a link where you can view our newsletters and see what kind of events are going on at the library. Um, become a friend. Um, many of you may be familiar with our um, uh, supporting organization, the Friends of the Keller Library. Um, they run a bookstore um, and the funds that they um, raise there through the sale of books are used to support the library um, in all sorts of ways. Um, and then they also meet monthly and they do a lot of things to support the library. And it is open to you. Uh, tutorial videos is a neat resource. It is a catalog, if it's gonna load of uh, tutorial videos about different things that you can do online. Um, so some of them are specific to the library, like BrainFuse and JobNow. Um, some of them are just like basic computer skills, Facebook, Google, things like that. Um, so if you need help just with anything on the computer, maybe look and see if uh, there's a video here. 
And then lastly, there's an advanced search feature. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but if we go over to the right here, we'll see, um, I'm actually logged in here, so I'm gonna log out so you can see more what this is gonna look like for you. But you'll see there's a sign in button here. That's where you're gonna um, sign in to your account. And so you would log in here using your library card number. And then your PIN is set as a default to be uh, the last four digits of the phone number that we have on file. Um, so that may be different from what you're used to. Our default used to be different. Um, so if you find that you're trying to log in with your old PIN and it's not working, um, try the last four digits of your phone number. The next thing I wanna show you is these three bars here. This is your menu. Um, I am gonna to refer to it as a hamburger menu. Um, I'm not sure where I got that from, but the three lines are meant to resemble a hamburger. Um, and if you click on that, you'll see you'll have a link here to my account, um, to the library's uh, website, to the library's hours um, that were open for business, which is handy. Um, and then you can also, let me go back. You can also change the language that you're viewing the catalog in. Um, so if your first language is Spanish or Vietnamese, um, you can switch there and it's gonna change the entire site. It's gonna translate it for you. Now the rest of the page is um, really just for browsing. Um, as you can see, that shows you all of, all of these things that are in our collection. Um, we do have these browse categories here at the top. And these will change a little. Um, you'll see the first one here is, is always gonna change depending on what the theme is of, um, of everything going on at the library that month. Um, so this month, our theme is spooky. Um, so we've, we've got spooky books featured here, um, but the rest of the buttons are gonna be the same month to month. We've got new fiction, new nonfiction, new DVD Blu-ray, and then cool checkouts. Um, so each category can have subcategories here. Um, so right now we're uh, in spooky books and then you can see you've got subcategories based on age groups. And for most of the categories, they're divided out by age. Um, the only one that's not is gonna be cool checkouts. Oh, there's a button there for uh, books in Spanish too. Um, cool checkouts is gonna have, um, they're not divided out by age, but more um, by type of checkout that it is. Um, so when you open a category, you'll see that it, it is automatically opening the first subcategory. Um, and you can see here, this blue text is telling you exactly what category you're in and it is actually clickable. Um, so if we click on it, it's gonna take you to a, just a different view of the same information um, with, with options to like check it out and put it on hold. Um, so I'm just gonna go back home using my logo here um, one other thing you might want to notice is that there is an option to change this view. If you um, don't like the way these are viewed right now, you think the buttons are like too big, or you want the title um, to be displayed, just switch here to the grid view, and then the tiles get a little smaller, and then the, the title and author is also displayed there as well. Um, so again, that's your uh, cover view versus grid view, and you can switch back and forth between that as you want. Um, but feel free, you can just browse these categories, um, look at the different age groups for each category, and um, maybe you'll find something good and new that way. Um, but let's talk about, instead of browsing, let's look at searching. Um, there's a search bar here uh, built into the top. Um, it defaults as a keyword search, so it um, works a lot like Google. Um, you can use all sorts of things. Um, it's gonna search the entire record for something uh, that you type in here. So you can use the title, the author, the subject, the series, or just any combination of all of that. Um, so let's say you know that you want, um, you know that there is a, a, an Alex Cross book that James Patterson wrote and it's something to do with Christmas, but you can't remember the title of it. Um, so what we can do is we can type in Patterson, Alex Cross, and Christmas. So basically what I've typed in here is an author's last name, a series, and a subject. And then I'm just gonna leave all these the same and click on search. And there, my first result is Merry Christmas, Alex Cross. Um, you can also change this search by keyword to a lot of different things. You can choose title, start of title, series, author, subject. Um, and again, we'll talk about advanced search in a minute, but um, that would be another way for you to just narrow it down a little. Um, there, these are still keyword searches, 
um, but it's only looking in a specific field. So it does allow you to, to be like less specific. So like if you're searching by author, uh, you can just type in Patterson or you can type in James Patterson. It doesn't have to be Patterson comma James, and then it, it'll still find it even if you're just kind of guessing. <clears throat> so I would really only change this, um, what you're searching by, if you're using um, like a real common term or your search terms could be confusing. Like if you wanted a book by Malcolm X, but you didn't want to sort through a whole bunch of books about Malcolm X, um, then I would change the to the author here and type in Malcolm X. And then it's going to find only the books that he wrote and not um, additional um, things that were written about him. One other thing you can change in your searching here, you'll notice that it's it's currently searching in the library catalog. You also have the option to search in lists, um, which are uh, user lists that are created by um, our librarians. Um, and I'll show you what they look like. Let me clear this out here. Um, they're usually things like award books, um, book club lists, um, staff picks, battle of the books, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so you can search in those as well. Um, to find lists, you can search either the, the item that's in the list or the name of the list. So I can type in um, Hank Green and search in lists, and it's going to give me all of the lists that include titles by Hank Green. Or I can search for the name of a list, and it's going to give me all of the lists that have that name. Um, or like, you know, if you are hoping there's a list for something, you can search for that too. So like, if you know you're looking for a Blue Bonnet book, um, that seems like something we would probably make a list for. You can just search Blue Bonnet and then it'll find the, the Blue Bonnet Award nominees, the reading list there for you to browse. Um, the other option is to search combined results. Now, if you search this way, it's gonna give you results in the library catalog and the lists. And it's also going to give you some added results from the Digital Public Library of America, um, which is just a free online resource. Um, okay, but that's just basic searching from this search bar. Um, I want to talk a little bit about advanced searching, um, which you can find the link here. Um, you can also do it through this drop down here, um, but I'm going to use this button here. Um, this allows you to just really narrow things down and get real specific, um, and you can use like multiple search terms. Um, so the easiest way to, to show you what how an advanced search work it works is to just do some for you. Um, so I'll give you some examples of like things that people would ask me for at the information desk in the library. Um, so let's say somebody wants to see a list of um, all of the Hallmark Christmas movies that are available right now in the library. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for Hallmark in the publisher field. And then I'm going to open up some of these additional all optional filters down here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change. Actually, I forgot I need to add in a add in a search field here. So you click on add search field, it adds a second one. So I'm gonna search for the subject of Christmas. Change this to subject. Okay, now down here, I'm gonna search, um, we said we wanted it to be here on the shelf today. So I'm gonna choose available at the Keller Public Library. And then in my format category, I'm just gonna choose movies. And then let's search and see what we find. So it looks like there's only one Hallmark Christmas movie on the shelf today, um, but this is it. It's Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe. It's on the shelf. Here's the call number. I can go find it. Um, so let's let's look at another one. Let's say I have um, a child wants books about psychology. Um, so I'm going to do a new search on this one. Um, just a tip here, if you're ever looking for a non-fiction um, subject for children, um, always note whether you're looking for something that's about animals or about children, uh, about humans, because they always have books about animals for kids for some reason. So I'm just going to type in human psychology, and that's going to be my subject. 
in the optional filters down here, um, again, I'm going to choose a let me go back up a format category of book. Um, literary form is a is the best way for you to specify whether you're looking for fiction or nonfiction. So I'm just going to search uh, choose nonfiction here. Under audience, you can get real specific here in audience, but I just want to choose the most general one and choose juvenile. And then um, it is always a good idea to limit the language. Um, we are just looking for books that are in English. So I'm gonna choose English here. Um, and let's say find. And look at that, uh, Heads Up Psychology, Who Am I? These are great. Um, and you can see some of them are checked out. Some of them are here. Um, so let's do one more advanced search just to give you some more look into that. Um, let's say you are interested in seeing what are the latest playaways that the library has acquired. Um, so for this one, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave this search for blank because um, I don't have anything specific I'm looking for there. Um, but I'm just here under format. Um, now I'm not I'm not doing format category because I, I, I want a specific format of audiobook. I'm going to choose format and then I'm going to choose play away. And then down here, there's this cool option for added in the last and let's say two months. And then let's find. So these would be the 23 playaways that were added into the collection in the last two months. That's pretty cool. Um, so just a note that you can use all of these um, advanced search uh, limiters, um, the optional filters that we used here. Um, all of these are also options that you can use um, in a basic search. Um, so like if we were looking here for James Patterson and just a keyword search, um, you can see I've got this enormous number 566, but I can narrow it down over here using those filters that we used before. And it's going to get much smaller. We want a book. And see, it's the it's your results are shrinking uh, to a much more manageable size. Um, so advanced search, you're limiting the search before you get the results list. And then uh, you can narrow the results over here after the search. Um, but let's take a look at a title um, to see what kind of information you can get from the catalog about that title. So I'm just going to do a search for the four wins. Um, so what you'll see here, um, the results page, this is the results page. It has lots of good information. Um, you can see the title, author, you can see what lists this book um, is included in. Um, the, the copies are here are grouped by format. Um, so you can see um, each of these blue labels here is a different format. And then each format has an availability status, which is going to be either yellow, green, or red. So here we can see the book. Um, it's all checked out here, but it is available elsewhere. The book on CD um, is available here. Um, oh, back up here at the book, I, I just want to point out that it shows you how many copies we've got, how many people are on the wait list, um, just to give you an idea of how available that item really is. Um, so you can see it's showing you here that this, this item is here, it's checked in. Um, so it's giving you the collection, that's this books on CD is the collection. And then it's giving you the call number. The audio BCD Hannah is the call number. Um, so to find this item on our shelf, what you're going to do is go to the books on CD collection, that area of the library, and then look for this call number on that shelf. Um, you'll see that it also includes here the e copies, um, and it'll tell you whether they're available or not and the wait lists for those. Um, it'll also tell you what platform this ebook is available on. Um, so you can see this one is on overdrive and this one is also on overdrive. Um, you might also see um, titles that are showing up from Hoopla or from Cloud Library. Um, so you could follow the links through this record to get to those platforms, or you can also get to this title directly from those platforms.
Um, these links here that say quick copy view are really handy. If you click on them, it'll show you exactly where copies are. Um, the bold green title uh, copy is available now. And then the, the plain black ones are all checked out. Um, you will notice that the call numbers change depending on which library owns that item. Um, so if you are using a, a call number to track down something on the shelf, make sure you're using the right call number. Um, if you try and find uh, this new FIC hand at the Keller Library, you're not going to find anything because we don't use a call number that looks like that. All right, I'm just going to close this quick copy view here and go back to the results page because you'll see here it also includes a description, um, which is just a summary of what this title is. Um, you can also click on this more info button. Um, more info is exactly the same as if I clicked on the title. They both lead to the same thing. Um, you can also see um, under each image, there's going to be a number of stars. These are just based on user ratings. Um, if we let's go ahead and open it and see. Um, so it's got a lot of the same information we saw in the search result results page, but a, a little more. Um, the ratings is broken down over here on the left. And then if we go down here, there's lots of cool stuff. Um, my favorites are these similar titles from Novelist. Um, so it's giving you suggested similar titles and it tells you why those items are similar. And then it's the same thing here with authors, similar authors, and why they're similar. Um, so if, if, if The Four Winds is your favorite book, um, it might be worthwhile to pull it up in the catalog and, and get some more recommendations based on that. Um, okay, so uh, what can you do from this page? Um, you can put a hold on an item. So this button here that says place a hold, um, you'll need to be logged in for this. Um, so we need to place a hold, we'll need to log in. So again, here, your login is going to be your entire library card number. Um, yours will be all numbers. Mine is not because it's fake. Um, but type in the whole number that shows on the back of your library card with no spaces. And then again, uh, we talked about earlier, your PIN or password is probably going to be the last four digits of your phone number. And then just click and you'll be logged in. Okay. So this that I was trying to place a hold. So we've popped up with the, the place a hold um, dialog box here. Um, so there's this blue note is just explaining to you what a hold is, um, but it's it, it tells you some good info, like you'll have 10 days to hold it once it's held. Um, you'll need to choose where you want to pick up your library, your item. Um, so you can choose any of the Metro Share, Metro Share branches. Um, and you can tell it that you always want to use this location. Um, so if you are a frequent user of our drive-through window, it's really handy to uh, use that pickup location and you can check this box and it's always going to use that. Um, just a note, um, if you don't choose the window, that's okay. They can still get your items from inside the library, um, but your transaction will be a lot faster if you choose to pick up at the pickup window um, and it'll save you a, save you and the librarians a little bit of time. Um, you'll also need to decide here if you want to place a hold on the first available item or a specific item. Um, I will recommend almost always you will want to use first available item. If you choose a specific item, it, your hold is going to take a lot longer because that item you're placing a hold on might be checked out um, and it might not be available, whereas the first available item might be ready right away. Um, so the only time you would really use specific items that I would recommend doing that is like if you're doing something that has multiple volumes, um, like a graphic novel or a TV series or an encyclopedia or something. Um, and then the last option here is just to log me out after requesting the item. This is really good. Um, like if you're using one of our PAC computers in the library, that way your account isn't staying logged in. Um, but I'm going to stay logged in, so I'm unchecking that. And then you'll just click on submit. It will confirm your hold and it tells you that you are number one in the line and uh, how many holds you've placed previously. And then also it's going to give you some recommended titles here. Um, that don't have any weights if you want to try and find something um, that you can get your hands on a little faster. So that's placing a hold. Um, so you can place holds on items that are checked out, 
items that are checked in, items that are um, on order. Um, you can pretty much always place a hold on something. Um, let's look at some of the things that are included in your account. Um, so if we go to the hamburger menu and we click on my account, it's gonna take us to this summary page um, for my account. So you can see there are boxes here for items checked out, overdue, holds, uh, ready for pickup. Um, and these are all links that you can click on. Um, there's also gonna be a recommended for you area. Um, this will have titles in it if you have rated anything. I haven't rated anything obviously on this account. Um, so it doesn't have any recommended titles, but this is where they would show up. Um, let's look at holds first. We're going to click on this and there's lots of good information here about your holds. Um, it's broken out between holds ready for pickup and pending holds. Um, so obviously holds ready for pickup are ready for pickup right now. Um, and it tells you here, pick up by October 17th. So I have until October 17th to pick up this book, um, before it moves on to the next person or gets put back on the shelf. Pending holds. If we look down here, we can see what position I am in line. Um, so I can get some kind of estimate on when it's gonna be ready. Um, you can also change your pickup location. If I decide I wanna pick this up at Watauga, I can change it here to the Watauga library. And now this item is gonna be picked up at Watauga instead. This is one I changed. Um, you can also cancel this hold if it turns out you don't need it anymore. Um, freezing is really cool. Um, it allows you to pause this hold so it won't be filled until you unfreeze it. Um, so like if you're going on vacation for a really long time or you have too many things um, to be read right now and you're not ready for this book yet, you can freeze it and then it won't be filled until you unfreeze it and then then it'll be filled and ready for you. Um, so that's a good way for you to say, I'm not ready for this one yet, but it does hold your place in line. Okay, let's go back to, um, that's, your, that's what your holds page looks like. And if you see over here on the left, it kind of breaks down all of the areas of your account. So I'm gonna use this to go through real fast, um, but you can see uh, checked out titles. I'm gonna look at that next. I don't think I have anything checked out on this account. Um, so I, sorry, I can't show you that, but this is where they would all be listed. Um, you have an all tab here that's gonna show you everything, but you can also break it down between physical materials and your e-materials um, if you're only interested in one category of those. Um, here, it will show you your due date. And then you will also see next to the item, um, if and when you can renew an item, it would show you that here and give you that option to renew. Um, we already talked about titles on hold. Let's talk about reading history. Um, something that's important for you to know is that your reading history is turned off by default. Um, for privacy reasons, we don't automatically track your reading history, uh, but a lot of people do want their reading history to be tracked on here. Um, so if you are interested in having it track that, you can click on this button here to start recording my reading history. And now everything that I check out on my account is gonna be listed here. And it'll have um, information about when it, when it was checked out. Um, you can also turn that off here by saying stop. And now it's turned off again. Okay, let's go down the list a little more here. Uh, find some messages. We are still fine free here at the Keller Library, but we do charge replacement fees if you lose an item. So you might see some charges here. Um, for things like that, if you've lost something. Um, you might also see some messages here from staff, like if we found your library card in the library or your card is about to expire, you'll see messages here. Um, okay, going down the list here, materials request. This is a, a, a space where you can suggest the library purchase something to add to the collection. Um, you are limited to a certain amount of things that you can request, but you can definitely request them. You can tell them all sorts of information about it. Um, and then you can find out here if your uh, request was purchased or not. Um, titles you've rated. If we look at this, um, again, I haven't rated anything on this title, but anything we had rated would show up in this list and we can edit our rating, uh, delete our rating if um, we change our mind or if we accidentally rated something there. Um, you could do all that from this portal. 
uh, recommended for you. Again, I'm not going to have anything here because I haven't rated anything, but this would just be another uh, way to view all of those recommended titles. Um, and they, again, are based on your ratings. Okay. In the account settings area here, um, you'll see the first option is my library card. Um, and this isn't gonna work great for me, but for you, you would see a scannable barcode here. So if you forgot your library card um, when you're at the library, you can pull up this screen on your account and use it to check out. Um, it also displays your library card number here. Um, so like if you wanna log into one of the computers, you can find that number here. Um, it also tells you when your library card expires. Under my preferences here, you can give yourself a custom username. Um, if you don't wanna have to type in your library card number every time to log in, you can assign it something else here. Um, you can choose your default language and your default pickup location. And then there's just an option here of whether you wanna be prompted to ask about your pickup location every time, or if you just wanted to show you the default all the time. Um, let's see, contact information. Um, I just want to warn you here that um, anything you change here doesn't take immediate effect. Um, contact information changes have to be approved by staff, um, and some things can't be changed at all through the portal. Um, so you can try and change your address here, but we're not going to approve that. Um, that has to be changed in person so that we can confirm that you're still a resident of the city of Keller. Um, but things like uh, your phone number, your email address, all of that can be edited here in this contact information area. Messaging settings. This is where you're going to control when and how we send you notices about items that you've checked out uh, or placed on hold. Um, so you check here what things you want. You uncheck it if you don't want that anymore. Um, you can say you want text message versus email. Now I will say with text messages, you have to provide this additional information down here at the bottom, um, the number, and you have to give a provider or they will not work. Um, just a note here, at digest, um, it's gonna be kind of like a summary that is saved um, for a period of time. So you won't get an email every single time um, something is due, but it'll kind of group your items together. Um, and then you'll just click on update settings if you changed anything to save it here. Okay, um, the next thing down on the list is linked accounts. So this is going to be really handy for those of you that have um, children, multiple children. Um, if you're uh, spouse is always picking up for you or vice versa, um, you can actually link your accounts together. Um, a lot of people think that um, accounts are of, from families are automatically linked, but they are not. Again, for privacy reasons, we let library cards stay completely separate unless you tell us otherwise. Um, so this is where you would tell us to do that. Um, so you can link accounts in here. Um, so let's see if I can add an account. Um, to add an account, to link it to yours, you would need to provide their library card number and their password. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do this, but this is where you would do it. Um, and then they would show up here. Um, so you can see I don't have any linked accounts, but they would be listed here if they were linked. Um, and then down here, this other account can view this account. This would be like if you logged into your kid's account that you had linked to yours, it would show your name here because you can view their account. Now, let's say your account is linked to your spouse and then y'all get divorced and so you don't wanna be linked anymore. Um, so all you have to do to unlink your account is to change your password and then that automatically breaks that link. Um, staff cannot link accounts on our side. That has to be something that's done by you. So this is where you're gonna wanna do it. Um, okay, the next one down the list is reset pin password. Um, I do recommend if you um, recommend that you change your password away from the default just to give yourself a little more security and this is where you would do it. Overdrive options, there's not a whole lot of options right here. It's really just asking you for the email address that you want to be notified, um, like when holds are ready. And then you can choose your um, default lending periods. Hoopla options. It's just asking you if you want to confirm before checking out from Hoopla in case maybe you accidentally checked it out and you weren't sure. 
The last option here in your account is search history. Um, so this is going to show you, you can see these are all the things that I searched today. Um, so like if you, um, you accidentally left a page and you want to go back to it or you uh, had better luck with the search that you tried earlier, you can go in here and you can choose to do the repeat those searches. Um, you can also from that page save a search. Um, so if there you find yourself doing a search a lot, um, so like this is something that I search a whole lot of times, I'm just going to choose save. And then it will be up here in the saved under search history. And so then I can always find that and it won't be deleted in time. Um, but if I do want to delete it, I can delete it here. One more thing I want to show you is um, I mentioned lists that staff can make. Um, you do, as a user, have the option to create your own lists. Um, so the way it works is we're just going to go to um, under here. There's a under your my account. There's a tab for my lists. We click on that and there's a button for create a new list. Now, if I did already have any lists, they would be listed here above this button, but I don't have any yet. Um, so I'm gonna click on create a new list. Um, you give the list a name, so books I want to read. Um, you can give it a description if you want. Okay, and now access, your choices are either public or private. Um, public lists are not really public. Um, what it means is you'll be able to take a, a, a copy the URL for this list and then email it to somebody and they'll be able to view it. Um, if this was set to private and I tried to send them the URL, it wouldn't work. They wouldn't be able to view it anymore. Um, but you're by making it public, you're not making your list show up in the list search um, like what we saw earlier. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and create this list. And it says it was created successfully, so close. So now if we go, we can see it here. It's now showing up here. I can click on it. And right now it's empty because I haven't put any books in here. Um, but let's see how to um, create, to add things to this list. So if I just go home, I'm just gonna do a search here and then we'll find some items that we can add to the list. Um, so, all right, look, Pride and Prejudice. That's a great book. I wanna add it to my list. Right here, there's a button, add to list. If I just click on it, it's gonna ask you which list you wanna put it on. Uh, do you wanna create a new list? You can also add a note about this specific title. I want to read this book um, in April of 2022. And then I'll just save it to my list. Now, if I go to my list, books I want to read, you can now see it's got one title. And Pride and Prejudice is there. And you can also see my list, my notes, April, 2022. Um, you can also add titles in bulk. Um, so if I wanna add multiple titles here, I can do that. I can type them in here. Um, so let's say I wanna do Jurassic Park. Um, let's say it. Now you'll notice I'm typing in the title and the author. Um, this is really the best way to do it. Um, if you type in the title, it will still find it. But you can see there's a note here that says it's just going to add the first thing that it finds that matches what you're typing in. Um, so if you're typing in something vague, it might not find exactly what you're going to want, um, which you'll see. I, I think there's some good examples of that here. Um, you can also type in the ISBNs here. Um, so if you happen to have that, that works as well. Um, just make sure you're hitting enter after each item that you wanna add and then click add to list. All right, and you can see here it added four titles to the list. So let's see what that looks like. So we've got, oh, Jurassic Park, it added the DVD, that's not what I want. Um, so that didn't work so well. So that would have worked better if I had used the ISBN. So we'll try that one again later. Um, it, actually worked. Look, this is the book. That's a great example. And this one is the book that works too. Um, you can edit them. There's an edit button here. Like if you want to add that note, you can move it to a new list, copy it to a list. You have lots of options there. 
All right, so that's how lists work. Um, you can have as many lists as you want and they can have as many items in you want, as you want in them as well. Um, you can email the list, you can print the list, you can change how it's sorted. You can even generate citations if you're doing something like a report paper. Um, the last thing I wanna teach you how to do is really just to sign out of your account, um, which is important to do, especially if you're using a public computer. Um, you're just gonna click here on your name and then down at the very bottom of this menu, there is a big sign out button. And now you can see your name's not there anymore, so you're signed out. So that's really all I have to show you today. There's lots that you can do with the catalog. Um, if you have any questions, of course, um, let us know. Um, you can email us, you can call us, you can come by. Um, we're happy to help. Um, like I said, we're still learning this new um, too. So if you find anything really cool, please share it with us. And um, thank you for your time today. I hope you all uh, find something that will work for you.